Hey, what's up guys? My name is Thomas Park. Welcome back to another VPN review. Today we're going to be checking out Zenmate VPN. It's the same company as CyberGhost owned by Cape. So we're going to help you decide if this is a VPN worth using by checking out in six different categories from the pricing, application, uh, speeds, customer support, reputation, and streaming compatibility. Um, so we're going to find out which tier it is on the VPN tier list.com. So without further ado, let's get into the Zenmate review. All right, guys, this is Zenmate VPN's pricing page. For $10 a month, you get uh, five simultaneous connections. Um, and two years is going to be $47 for the first two years, then $47 annually. So you sign up two years, it's going to be $47. Um, and then I guess after that, when it like auto renews, it's going to be more around $94, if my math is correct. One year is going to be $53, which is a decent price. Overall, I don't have too many complaints with this pricing system. I would prefer there to be um, a little bit more transparency, perhaps for the end consumer with the way this works. I could see some people being confused by this, um, especially since it's kind of like the font is intentionally kind of grayed out. Um, I guess, yeah, even when you click on it, it's kind of grayed out and like fine details, you know what I mean? Um, I do like that there's no like kind of three year plan. However, you know, same thing here. It's still saying say, uh, save 80% and it looks like it's $2 a month when in fact this is really the cost. So that's my little bit of skeptical, healthy skepticism. And if we're looking at it here, $10, like I said, it's just kind of okay. We can see cheaper VPNs. We've seen more expensive VPNs. It's kind of like the average cost for a VPN. So let's go ahead and buy it, see what it's like and get moving through the v review. So guys, unsurprisingly, Zenmate VPN actually has a pretty decent app. It's actually pretty similar to CyberGhost VPN's application. Uh, they're owned by the same company, so that's not a big surprise. Uh, the thing I like about this app kind of is that it kind of can like be smaller. Um, you know, like kind of when you first start it open, it kind of looks like this, but you can kind of expand it and use it in this interface, which I actually like. In addition, the settings are okay. You have some auto connect start. Um, startup things you have a kill switch which just looks like it's kind of like an internet kill switch um, it cannot be deactivated I'm not really quite sure why that is um, but besides that there's a little bit more uh, connection settings here you could customize the protocol with the good settings here available I like that IQV2 is available not a ton of VPNs offer that but it's nice to see um, you can use use TCP instead of UDP sometimes TCP is a little bit more reliable but UDP is kind of like the more default configuration protocol to choose for speeds. You also have some random port collect connections here to test a wide range of ports to connect. So it's kind of interesting that it kind of just autom automatically does this for you. And we have DNS leak protection and stuff like this. Overall, it's a decent application, a good amount of customization. In terms of the servers, we have a good amount as well, using pretty much probably the same stuff as CyberGhost. I do like um, the you know amount of service here, and it's kind of weird because you can't necessarily like you can't like specifically pick a region in the United States unless I'm mistaken. Um, best server location looks like it's going to be kind of like the default fastest server for you. So I'm going to go ahead and test that out, connect to it, and see what kind of speeds we can get in the next section. All right, guys, now we're going to be doing the speed test with um, Zenmate. So usually without VPN active, I get around 500 megabits per second on these kind of speed tests, around 19 or so ping, 20 uh, megabits per second for upload. Um, usually with a pretty good VPN provider, I could get anywhere between two to 300 megabits per second. As with all VPNs, you're gonna get a speed decrease, but some of the best ones offer less of a speed decrease than the slower ones. Right away, I could see that this one seems to be exceptionally slow. Um, very slow, maybe one of the slowest ones I've tested lately in a speed test. Not really sure why it's going so slow. Maybe I'll try a couple more servers, but this could just be an exceptionally slow VPN. Upload rate usually doesn't get affected too much. Download here, 18.69 and latency 47. One thing immediately that's bugging me, uh, it's hard to really customize your server to a certain extent. You can see the list of servers, but going here to customize to pick specific servers doesn't really let you have any more options. So I'm not really quite sure why this is. Most VPNs will allow you to customize at least per region, but with this VPN, all it really allows you to do is pick kind of the continent 
not specifically uh, closer to cities. So this could be impacting speed. All right, guys, now we didn't get a very impressive speed test for Zenmate VPN at all. And as expected, we're also getting a very mediocre torrent test. We're getting under two megabytes, which is extremely slow, possibly one of the slowest VPNs out there and quite disappointing. So if you're looking to get a good torrent VPN, I wouldn't recommend Zenmate. Go ahead and check out the top ranking VPNs on VPN tier list to see faster torrent downloader VPNs. So guys, what about um, Zenmate VPN's reputation score? Well, in terms of being a company, it's owned by Cape Technologies, who also owns CyberGhost VPN. Now, if you're familiar with Cape Technologies, you might not like this because, well, just like Private Internet Access, who is now owned by Cape Technologies, Cape Technologies used to be formerly owned or formerly named uh, as a company called Crossrider, which is an Israeli company. And what this company did would develop kind of like shady kind of apps like fake install methods for Adobe products that would generate money for them and put ads on your computer. So if that sounds like something that's not very good to you, well then you're not gonna like the reputation of this company. In terms of logs, well, Zenmate collects plenty of logs when you go on their website, including your IP address and stuff like that. However, the privacy policy here is so dense that it's hard to find information about what they actually collect while using their VPN. I did find some other people saying that they don't collect logs. Um, like I said, it's kind of a weird privacy policy, not my favorite written up one to be exact because it's hard to find exactly what is collected on the website, what is collected on the VPN service. It doesn't really specify, but aside from that and the reputation, it's honestly not gonna be very strong in that category for sure. Now, as you guys know on the channel, not every VPN has live chat and good support. Fortunately, it looks like Zenmate has a pretty capable support team, probably because they're part of kind of the larger Cape Technologies partnering, you know, kind of with CyberGhost and some of these other larger VPN companies. So support here is pretty good. I uh, didn't really have any major problems. They seem pretty helpful and there wasn't a long queue or anything like that. It seems to be available during most times. Not only that, but I was also able to get a refund very easily with the live chat representative. Um, so there you go. So guys, one interesting thing I've noticed about Zenmate is that the servers have somewhat of a low capacity. As you can see here, the Netflix US server is actually full, so I can't even test it right now. Not only that, but HBO Now is also full, so I'm gonna have to try some of these other servers to see if it could work with Netflix. But if you're someone who's looking to use Zenmate, you might often encounter this problem as well, especially since I'm not really testing this during peak hours, you know, in the evening. Right now, it's just kind of the middle of the morning, so this is kind of not very good. <laughs> so we are connected to this uh, Amazon Prime server, as you can see, let's see if it works with a US version on Netflix. So unfortunately not. So, you know, this is a pretty big problem. Okay, now we're gonna actually test this Prime Video server. This ping is not very ideal. Uh, it looks like it is going to work. So at least there's that. Okay guys, we're connected to a BBC iPlayer optimized server. Let's go ahead and see if this stuff works. Um, so far, so it looks like it's not gonna work here either. Oh God, what is happening there? Oh. Now there's not really a Hulu optimized server, so we'll test the Amazon Prime one, see if it works with this. Um, and let's see if it works with Hulu. So it looks like there's another error again. All right guys, for the final review, Zemi it's gonna get a 2.29 out of five, making it a tier three VPN not really recommended for use. And why is that? Well, pricing is just kind of okay. The application is 3.5 out of five, why is that? Well, the basic kind of application in terms of the features is actually pretty good, well, but when selecting specific servers, you're gonna find that you can't really do that per you know region. It's just based on continent, not like specific cities, which can impact your speeds. Not only that, but a lot of the servers for streaming are often overloaded, which is annoying even not during non-peak times. Speeds for this VPN seem to be really slow in speed tests and torrent tests. Reputation is just a flat zero just because it's associated with Cape, which is not a very good company. A lot of people think the same thing. Customer support here is pretty good. I got a refund very easily and the live chat is very responsive. Streaming compatibility seemed to work with only Prime Video. It didn't seem to work with Hulu, Netflix, or BBC iPlayer. And it was hard to test because a lot of the time the servers were overloaded. Overall guys, that's my thoughts on this VPN. And let me know what you think down in the comments down below. And I'll see you again very soon.